via telephone, the Majority Leader, Delegate Eric Hal Soder. E, how are you, sir? Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? <laughs> We're great. Generous of you to buck up with a free rate on test kits today, Eric, putting that on your tab. <laughs> I know, I thought, that's hilarious, but good, good, good plug here. Good job. <laughs> Nicely done. Get your little pub there with the uh, test kits. Yeah, all yeah. Very nice. All right, we're, uh, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here, as they say, uh, Eric, and there's a lot to get to. Uh, in these uh, last uh, days here before the session 11 ends, days. Right? 11 days left. Yep, 11 days. And talking with Speaker Pro Tem Paul Espinosa yesterday, he seemed very positive about a deal being struck regarding uh, tax cut legislation and such. Do you feel the same way? I do, very much so. Uh, keep in mind, any time that we can reach a compromise, it's a win for our citizens. And uh, many weeks of uh, conversations here, uh, we've presented it to our caucus. We've actually whipped the votes. We're still in consultation with the caucus. I believe next week uh, you'll see us run the bill on the floor. So, so good news. Good news. Uh, now things can always change. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind. So, you know. Do, but uh, do you anticipate right any? Now, I, I don't anticipate any. Uh, I am trying. I am meeting with tax and um, the tax commissioner. On Friday, I do want a little clarity on the homestead exemption for veterans. Uh, the way that it's written, it's not well written. As uh, t just to make sure that, for instance, if if you're a veteran and your spouse isn't, if the veteran dies, does the spouse retain the homestead exemption? Or what if uh, your spouse is a veteran? You know, the, the roles were reversed. You know, if, if you're not the veteran, but you're the homeowner and your spouse is the veteran and you have died, does the veteran still retain who is the spouse in that scenario? So there's just a couple questions that I want to ask tax uh, just in case I get those questions on the floor. I try to anticipate and try to think about every question that I could even possibly get answered so I have something to tell someone. <laughs> I always want to be truthful. I always want to give them the facts, and uh, nothing worse than you never want to stand up there and BS with someone because uh, that's just not how you do things when you're on the floor. Uh, but it is if you're hosting a talk show, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Eric, there's a lot of moving parts, and I really commend you and everybody else to kind of keep some semblance of, of understanding. You've just mentioned homestead exemption. Now, what yes. you, what you talk, this is the homestead exemption that's been on the books for many, many, many years, as opposed to the tax credit for the disabled veteran that is part of this tax bill. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, that's two, correct. Se it, two separate things. Yeah. It is. It, it's, it's treated as a homestead yeah. exemption, but it's different than the homestead exemption that you're used for or used to. Yes. So it is it's totally different. It's a new uh, provision of a homestead exemption. So, but 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 the uh, but the tax credit for the disabled veteran uh, is um, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with homestead exemption. That's just a tax credit. It is a tax credit, but it's an it's a tax credit of all ad valorem property yes. taxes. Okay. Okay. So um, the way that the bill was written, it's a hundred percent ad valorem, you know, reduction of their taxes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's called a homestead. It's a new type of homestead exemption. It's not a twenty thousand dollar homestead exemption that most people think about that our seniors are are getting. This is a different type of homestead exemption. So. Yeah, uh, is that more confusion or <laughs> no, no. I, actually, it is more confusion, but I think it may be just me. Uh, but it's yeah, I, uh, yeah, it is. Let me sort this out. Maybe others have the same problem. Uh, let's go to another subject. The uh, the uh, House Bill thirty forty two, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. I think that has also been recently passed, uh, or Senate version has been passed as well. Uh, I think I understand the basic premise of it. Does that in encompass or include the vaccination question that we've been here talking about so much recently? I, I don't believe so, no. Okay. No, but I do know that the uh, there was a vaccine exemption amendment that was offered, but it was kind of wonky. It was offered in a bill that only would exempt certain uh, um adults that were applying for a grow to learn program to become teachers so it would only isolate out a certain segment of this 
these students and uh, it was kind of wonky but it failed it was like 64 nays and only 22 yeses but there is there has been a a push to try to get a religious exemption for vaccine across the finish line now uh, in fact we had brandon Steele who challenged the speaker during the speaker's race he uh, attempted to discharge a bill from com- from committee that was not successful uh, i keep hearing that there's a vaccine exemption bill moving in the senate but folks today's the last day if it doesn't move it's dead yeah. all house bills have to be out today and all senate bills have to be out by their respective houses so if not the bills are dead okay would you discuss a little bit the uh the religious freedom uh restoration act uh the uh, house bill uh 3042 i'm not prepared i don't have the bill in front of me bill but i was i was Thought thought I was going to be talking more about the revenue collections and so forth like that. Let's, yes. let's do at. let's yeah. let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. Sorry. Sorry. No, Maybe no, next let's time. do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I have all the stuff for the tax yeah. proposal laying in front of me sure. in case I had questions on it, but uh, but not a problem. Yeah. No. Let's get to February numbers, uh, Eric. Do you have an estimate or any final numbers at this point? Well, right now we have the the most current data I have is for February 27th, so I won't see uh, yesterday's data until tomorrow or sometime later today. But right now, the state, as of February 27th, we're about 76, we're exceeding estimates by about $76 million. Um, Our personal income tax, we're up about $17 million for the month over our estimates. Uh, Consumer sales tax, we're up about $26 million. Uh, severance tax were up about twenty seven million dollars and corporate net income tax were up about two million. All of these are up over our estimates for the month of February. And so, I anticipate those totals to be added to for your final day not included, right? Right. Those totals will reflect a little higher total here uh once the day that it was from yesterday, I suspect we'll be probably north of a hundred million, just a little bit. We're close to a hundred million dollars for the month of February. And which, I, w- go ahead. I said I think you were at nine hundred and ninety-five million for the year coming into February, right? Right now we're one billion seventy-one million two hundred and forty-nine thousand two hundred and seventy-five dollars. <laughs> so sixteen cents. Sixteen cents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's I just like to give you the factual number, uh, numbers, guys. I like that. <laughs> and you still have to go through March, April, May, and June. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we're still on target. Everybody has heard 1.7, maybe even as high as $1.8 billion. And I want to bring something also to your attention. The budget that we're working on right now for the fiscal year 24 it's already projected at minimum to have a $1.2 billion surplus. Uh, just by having the flatline budget of $4.8 uh, billion. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it, that's, that's the importance of having a flatline budget, controlling the rate of spending uh, within government. Um, and these, you know, it yields these large surpluses that you should be able to use for uh, tax cuts. Now, right now, in this whole budget process that we're working, the House uh, Finance will be presenting its budget tonight in committee to pass. Uh, We should have it on the floor tomorrow. Uh, It'll be on first reading Thursday, second reading Friday. The whole House will vote on the House's version of the budget on Saturday. So the Senate has already passed their budget a little early, but they have passed it. Uh, we have it over here. I haven't got a chance really to review a lot of what the Senate had passed, but uh, once we pass our House budget on Saturday, then you have next week at least two days for a compromise. Uh, hopefully the Senate and House Finance Chairman can reach some type of compromise, and then we have the compromise budget that by the 8th or 9th that we're voting on, the 58th or 59th day, and we can, right before we complete our legislative action. Eric, I, I realize that the House has uh, uh, has passed. I believe you passed a budget earlier, a tax budget earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, now you got one coming back from the Senate. Will the Senate yes. be used as a basis for the Finance Committee with a new deliberation, or will you revert back to your earlier bill? So, unfortunately, and, and how the budget process happens in West Virginia. Whatever house you have to, for instance, on the House side, whatever bill that we pass, 
that has a fiscal impact to the budget, we have to account for it in our budget. The Senate will account for what they pass, and then uh, once you know, once both budget passes, then you sit down and uh, you you reach a compromise. There could be Senate bills that were not taken up in the House, so that comes out of the Senate budget. There could be House bills. Here's a prime example, if you're ready. We passed the governor's uh, tax cut of $1,084,000,000. Million. So we have to account for that in our House budget. And uh, obviously, when uh, when we pass our budget on Saturday, we already know what the compromise version is. We're going to pick up the compromise version, just for your listeners, is about $754 million in tax cuts. So we're going to have roughly $400 million more uh, to the positive that does not have to be accounted for in the House budget once we have this compromise budget position. But are, are, you, are you also including the $2,300 pay raise for state employees that the Senate passed, Eric, in your budget? We do not have to because we have not passed that yet. And, um, of course, today is the last day for House bills. Now, tomorrow, on, let's see, today's Wednesday, Thursday, House Finance, we'll be running the pay raise bill and the uh, PEIA bill. So uh, we do not have to account for those bills because those were Senate bills. So we don't have to account for them in our budget. But like I said, both houses, once they account for what bills they pass, then you come together on a compromise budget and you pick out those bills that that, that did not reach uh, complete you know, or completion. So, for instance, if that uh, pay raise bill fails over here, then it's dead. The Senate would have it would have to come out of the Senate's budget, okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, I suspect the uh, pay raise bill will pass along with the PEI bill that will pass. Maria Lawrence. So, Eric, you you said the magic word a couple times uh, yeah. in your remarks, compromise, and I know yeah. you can't really speak to what the Senate's doing. Although we have Senator Barrett coming on a little mm-hmm. bit later, are you? optimistic on the tax cut plan that you will be able to reach some sort of compromise um, with the Senate moving forward in these last days? Absolutely. I think it's a, Maria, I think it's a good start. I think it's the right direction. And I'm going to do everything that I can to reach a compromise. Uh, like I said, we've, we've talked about it in our caucus. Um, Yes, the House would have liked to see seen stronger personal income tax cuts, uh, but this bill, that this compromise version, basically we received a $575 million personal income tax cut. Uh, there's money in it for the, the refundable tax credit for vehicles of about $157 million. The Senate's bill that they sent over to us uh, in negotiation, I basically accepted uh, what they sent to us, because I saw the, the 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 ability that hey look we're getting the the better end of the deal here with a five hundred seventy five million dollar personal income tax cut. So, okay. all right, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. Yes, yes. So the, the the whole package as it works, Eric, if you're a state employee, is if the twenty three hundred dollar raise gets passed, we understand mm-hmm. there would be a twenty six percent PEIA insurance premium increase. However, there would be a 21 and a quarter percent state income tax decrease and a refund of 100 percent of your vehicle personal property tax assessment, regardless of the number of vehicles that you own in the home. Correct? Correct. And keep in mind that PEIA is a complex issue that if something is not done by the year 2027, the taxpayers of the state, they're going to be on the hook for about a $500 million bailout. Um, a lot of us, and in fact, Senator Barrett could confirm this when he's on, uh, we've been advocating that, look, there should have been, pay, uh, not pay raises, but uh, premium increases. Uh, I mean, since I've got elected, I was elected in 2010, there has never been a premium increase. And that's just not sustainable. I mean, most private insurances, they're rising at 10 to 12 percent. But for PEIA, Ever since I've been here, there has never been a premium increase. So the thought process behind this bill is, hey, let's do a pay raise, 
and then out of the pay raise, for instance, if the pay raise is $2,300, uh, uh, yeah, the state employee would get would receive about, I'm just making this number up, 1300 of it. The other 800 would go to satisfy the uh, premium increase of uh, the 5%. You're going to be doing this every year for the next five years. So every year you're going to see a pay raise, and then you're going to see a offset for a premium increase. Uh, these premium increases need to be up 20 25% just to get us in line. And remember, we're only taking half of it each and every year. If health care costs are rising 10 to 12%, we're only doing a 5% uh, premium in- increase. But somehow we've got to stabilize this or it's all going to implode upon itself. Bill, before you go, i got to get this question in because I have Bill and Maria in here who both have involvement with hospice. Coming up in the next segment is the CEO of WVU Medicine and Teresa McCabe. Has there been any movement on certificate of need legislation in West Virginia that would change the current status quo? There has been. There's been these these little skinny CON repeals, but no major CON uh, repeal. And also, one other thing... Um, we had to fight on the floor for locality pay, the version that I talked about at the chamber. Uh, that went down in defeat yesterday. We only had 42 yes votes, 56 nay votes, but I'm positive. Um, I'm going to keep whittling away at it. I, don't, I only need nine more votes to get 51 votes in the House. So every year we're getting stronger and stronger. I know Senator Barrett has a locality uh, uh, pay bill that's moving on the Senate side. Uh, when you get him on this morning, just remind him uh, it didn't fare well on the House side. And ours, that was on the House side, it was just set up a commission, let the commission look at nine factors across the state to determine what the locality pay should be. And um, it, it erupted into a north versus the south, <laughs> east versus the west. You know, it was like, but uh, it went down 42 to 56, but... Remember, slow and steady wins the race. It took uh, it took me almost eight nine years to repeal prevailing wage and, and to help get right to work. So these big issues like that, they just take a little time. Personal income tax, you know, I've been advocating five six years. Uh, so here we are. So these big issues like this just take a little time. Eric, the I believe the uh, uh, the locality pay is uh, this has some more optimism in the Senate. Uh, if it does pass the Senate, uh, and still when, one day is today the crossover day, could it conceivably be revisited in the House? Oh, it can be. But uh, if it's any indication what happened yesterday, and remember, the bill that we had on the floor yesterday in the House the legislature would have to take some action to appropriate money. Well, that scared everybody to death. Yeah. <laughs> they they, they uh, focused on that there was a fund created in the bill, and the fund's just a special revenue fund that had no money in it. But w- once we received the recommendations from this commission, then it would be up to the legislature to appropriate money. If the legislature never appropriates money, guess what? You would never have locality pay. Sure. But it was a way to take the... Uh, the Christmas tree effect, because anytime you bring a bill to the House floor, somebody's going to stand up and argue, well, what about my county? Well, what about my county? And next thing you know, you bring down a $300,000 bill for state troopers, and it turns into a $30 million bill, like what happened to us last year. Yeah. Eric, the Senate uh, tax cut did not address the marriage penalty. Uh, do you That's antici- correct. Did you anticipate the House side will address the marriage penalty? I do not anticipate okay. that. So. And one other quick uh, uh, clarification, Uh, talking about the uh, personal property tax for vehicles, Uh, you mentioned refund. I think that's actually a tax credit, is it not? It's a refundable tax credit. So Mm -hmm. if, if, Bill, if you have, I'm just making this up, $200, now here's the caveat. You have to timely pay your taxes. So if you have timely paid your taxes to the county, then you'll be able to apply for a refundable tax credit against your uh, state income tax. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have no state income tax, then obviously uh, the state will be sending you back a refund, a check. So this is going to require uh, action on your part. Uh, When you file your income tax a subsequent year, you've got to ask for, apply for that tax credit from uh, personal property. Is that correct? 
The only thing that you have to do is timely pay your taxes to the county. Everything you else timely, is okay. Every, everything, yep. everything else is done for you. Then. And that yeah. that yeah. when you go then to pay your yeah. taxes, yeah. somebody's going to say, "Oh, yeah. here, look." Okay, good. Um, good. That, that's the point I was trying to make. Yeah. So it's all it's you don't have to file uh, uh, specifically for the the tax credit. Well, now keep in mind now, the tax office will be promulgating rules. There'll probably be a form. Uh, your accountant will, you know, whoever does your tax preparation uh, will, uh, you know, file this form along with your, your state income tax and, and so forth. But the key is you've got to pay your taxes timely. If you're one day late, you're you're not eligible for the refundable tax credit. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Question for you, Eric, in regards to the veterans homestead exemption, is that all veterans, only retired veterans, those who have done their twenty years and are getting a pension, veterans, or someone who served a hitch and got out after two, three, four years? No, it's structured for veterans who are ninety percent or higher disability. So, if you're a service disability of ninety percent or higher then you're eligible for this, what we call a, a homestead exemption. Gotcha. Also, are you prepared to talk about the deliberate intent bill? A well, the deliberate intent, um, yes. I mean, the deliberate intent bill was another bill that, you know, we, we the trial lawyers, <laughs> uh, they reached a compromise. And basically, the, 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 the damages now are capped at 500000 uh, there were no caps on uh, attorney fees or anything like that, but uh, it's a watered-down version of what was trying to pass last year. Uh, but once again, it was an agreement, and it was a compromise, so it's a start. So, But no, it passed the House, and uh, it's off to the Senate. And any indication from any of your friends in the Senate how they feel about the bill? I'm not certain, but I'm sure it will pass. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a red meat Republican issue for years. and um, But like I said, it's a start. It does cap the uh, the damages to 500000 and uh, it And in the bill for your listeners, it was no more than 250000 but now it's been raised to 500000 So, But that was the agreement that the uh, Judiciary Committee, along with all the stakeholders, could uh, adhere to. And uh, that's that's what was passed out on the House floor. And to restate, this does not reduce a cap. This doubles the cap of what previously the liability was from 250 to 500. Exactly. Yes. Very good. Uh, any so, final any final thoughts, Eric, or anything else you're working on? We haven't discussed. You want to get across in this final minute? Well, I, I'm trying to keep tempers from. I mean, this is the time when you start. <laughs> you to mean keep between tempers. Bill and Maria? <laughs> yeah. or are you talking about down there? No, no down here. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm managing 88 Republicans. Uh, we're doing a, a good job. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. We're doing daily daily briefings every day. We're trying to mitigate a lot of conversations on the floor. We're trying to mitigate problems. I jokingly, um, Leadership Berkeley was down this week and, and they asked me my title. I said, I'm, I'm ahead of the complaint department. So <laughs> I'm trying to mitigate th those complaints. And before they turn in, you know, there's usually when you have a problem, it's only about, uh, say, an inch big. You're trying to prevent it from growing to a three foot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so and, that's and what I'm I, trying to do. Uh, excuse me. I thought I said to you at some point, Eric, before you got started, why would you want to take this job? Is it not like herding cats? So is that yeah. accurate or inaccurate at this point? No, right. Very, very much a accurate. <laughs> okay. and, and then the other problem is I didn't take into consideration is how much time that you have to sit in your in your seat and i was looking up at the clerk and i was like man i wish i had his bladder <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> you've you got to have someone cover for you in case someone makes a motion you know what i mean so uh but uh anyways no it's it's i'm on i'm honored to serve uh with the speaker and i'm humbled and honored to serve uh in my capacity for our citizens and i'm going to do everything i can to make sure that uh, i protect the citizens and put more money back in their pockets. Eric, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Eric. Thank yep, you. We'll see you guys.